appreciate everyone coming out to today's webinar. We've got uh, Spencer Powell from Builder Funnel, who's going to be uh, doing a talk here on demystifying website and SEO, how to attract your ideal clients through Google search. So, you know, really excited for today. I've, I've known Spencer for a good little while now. We're, we're just uh, reminiscing, trying to remember exactly where we met each other. It was uh, at, at some show uh, a couple of years ago, but uh, you know, these guys have, uh, you know, worked with a lot of our clients, so we know a lot about them, uh, definitely do good work. So I'm excited to to have you on here today, Spencer. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited as well. Going to do a couple little housekeeping things as usual. I uh, want to encourage everyone to join our Job Tread Pros Facebook group. You know, it's a great place to uh, ask questions, connect with others, get help, you know, learn best practices, share tips. Uh, you know, and just whatever, whatever else you may want to throw out there. We had uh, someone yesterday asking for some Photoshop help and, uh, you know, needed to remove someone from a photo. So we had had a couple a uh, couple of people take a crack at it. I, I used the Photoshop AI just to, uh, to to remove them. So that worked out pretty well. But it's it's a great community, great group. You know, if you're not in there, we'd love for you to hop out and join us. We've also got uh, today we, we released uh, another new episode today uh, by Liliana from J Design Pool and Spa. Don't be afraid of technology. She's got a really incredible story. Uh, definitely want to tune into that. You know, we've, we've got several episodes. Every Wednesday we publish them, uh, you know, on, on uh, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, uh, or just directly on builderstories.com. So definitely check those out. Lots of good, uh, good information there. And uh, again, want to plug the, the Job Tread Connect user conference that we've got coming up in January. That'll be uh, January 17th to the 19th here in Dallas, Texas. You know, really excited to have everybody come out. This will be our, our second time doing it. You know, we're, we're, we're really planning for a big event here. Uh, you know, want to also give a shout out to, uh, to, to Spencer, you know, and Builder Funnel. They are one of our sponsors going to be, uh, you know, attending the event and doing, a, doing another great talk there. So, you know, it's be, be another time to get to meet Spencer uh, in, in, in person. Uh, you know, so definitely want to come out. Uh, for that, get your tickets directly in JobTread. Uh, we are also going to be launching our JobTread awards at this uh, at this event. So we uh, we've, we've I believe are deploying the website that has the awards listed. Uh, we're going to have a, a a best budget template, best schedule template. I've got a best use of formulas, uh, best how to video, and a best growth story. So these will be things that you're going to want to apply for on the website. Um, we've got $500 cash prizes for each of the uh, the selected winners there. So definitely check that out. Really excited to, to, to see what everyone, uh, you know, submits there for those. So it'd be, be, be a really neat thing for us to be launching this year at Job Tread Connect. So without further ado, I want to, again, introduce uh, Spencer Powell here. You know, Builder Funnel is, uh, you know, does a lot of things, but, you know, strategic marketing plans, you know, lead generation, website design, digital marketing services, you know, they, they, they are a really great group, very knowledgeable. You know, I've gotten to see them work firsthand. I've, I've seen the impact that they've been able to make on customers. You know, so we're really excited to have, you know, Spencer and his his team part of the Job Tread Marketplace. You know, during this presentation or after, uh, you can go and reach out to them directly through that. You can learn a lot more. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Spencer. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate it. And um yeah, it's been uh, fun getting to know you guys over the last couple of years and uh, definitely like what you guys are doing in the industry, uh, shaking things up and and helping a lot of people that uh, that need it and need some good transitions. So um, let me see if we're working here. Let's see. All right. I think we're I think we're good. So today we are going to talk about demystifying websites and SEO and and I put that really because I've been, so I've been doing this 13 years and I feel like there's all this like voodoo mystery magic around SEO and how it works. And so we won't be able to dive into, you know, every angle of SEO today, because that definitely would, would take up a few days worth of material. But what I want to do is kind of distill some basic principles um, give you guys some tools, some things that you can directly apply. I'm a big fan of um, listening to something like this and being able to take immediate action. So hopefully everyone here will at least be able to identify two, three, four, five things that you can take from this and start putting them into place right away. Um, let's see, Eric, I'm not sure if I have control. All right. So we will... 
run through this as a general agenda. We're going to talk about the purpose of a website. Then we'll talk about actually defining SEO so we can be on the same page in terms of what it is and what we're actually talking about when we say those three letters. And then we'll talk about strategy tactics, and then we'll get into kind of the meat of some best practices. And we'll cover what we call on-page SEO best practices. And then we'll also talk about local SEO. So I think somebody had chatted, hey, I want to learn uh, more about Google My Business. So we'll talk about that piece. Um, we'll talk about some results that you can experience and see through SEO. And then we'll identify some next steps for you, some things that you can um, tackle. And then we'll do some Q&A too at the end if uh, if you want to yeah, drill into anything specific. So if you don't know me or aren't familiar with Builder Funnel, um, I started the company in 2010 and really was working with my uncle's remodeling custom homes business. We fumbled our way through learning a lot about digital marketing, but took them from two to 10 million over about four years. And so uh, from that point, I said, I think I can help some other people do this, start an agency. Today, we're about 25, 26 people. Um, we're pretty much full-time remote and we've helped our clients generate over $150 million in sales. Um, I wrote a book, it's called The Remodeler Marketing Blueprint. It is on Amazon, but also if you just send me an email um, after this, I'd love to just ship you a free copy. We've got some here in the office. So um, we'll drop my email in at the end. And then if you like podcasts, we also have a couple Builder Funnel Radio and Remodeler Stories. And a longer story that I won't tell the, the, the history on is I have eaten at all 73 Chipotle restaurants in the state of Colorado. Um, and if you come to the Job Connect conference in January, I'll be there and I can share that story with you. So let's talk about the purpose of the website. I want to start there. And um, I'm curious how you guys all think of your website. So if you want, just drop in the chat, um, you know, maybe how you think about it um, and what the purpose of that website is. And as you guys are, are typing, um, I will kind of slowly work into the way we see it. Um, but as a general kind of overview is we feel like the website should be your best salesperson. And the best part is it works for you 24 seven. It doesn't take vacation. It doesn't take weekends. Um, it's always live and it's always working for you. There are really a few things here. Um, yeah, Elizabeth says to build trust and form potential customers of our process. Um, I love that you say build trust because we're going to talk about that. Um, and you can see it right here as number two on this slide. Um, but the first one is that your website can actually drive qualified leads for you and it pulls them in. And I think there's a perception out there in the marketplace that, you know, the internet drives garbage leads or produces junk leads or tire kickers. Um, it does, but it also drives some really qualified leads. Um, we have plenty of design build remodelers that are driving projects that are, you know, hundred thousand to five hundred thousand dollar projects through Google, through Google search, um, custom homes that are going for one to three million that are coming starting with a Google search. Um, and so you can attract, and then once somebody is there, you can build trust and credibility. And like I said before, it's really this business asset that never sleeps. And that's my favorite part, um, is that you can build this to really become a machine that is working for you all the time on the revenue side of the business. And so these are some things that we want to see and look at when we think about the website and the performance of that. But the first step is really, we need to get more people to the website. You know, we need to get more traffic. We want to drive that traffic in to our site from the areas that we want to do work in and from the types of people that are our ideal clients. Um, but we generally want to see that our traffic is rising and, and we're growing that and getting more people to the site. And then from there, we want to look at leads. Are we actually getting more leads from that traffic. I'm sure many of you have dabbled with, you know, paid ads, whether that's Google or Facebook, or maybe you've done, you know, some different um, advertising campaigns. Um, there's like different, you know, YouTube advertising. There's the like local TV ads. There's different things you can do. 
And the companies that will report on it will generate a ton of impressions for you or a lot of clicks. That is the first step. But then the immediate next step is we need leads from that traffic. And that's a good indicator that the quality of that traffic is strong as if we're getting more leads. And so that would be people filling out forms, engaging with the site, calling in um, and requesting um, you know, a phone call or kind of raising their hand and saying they're they're interested. Okay, so that's the purpose of the website and that's really where SEO fits into this. And so let's start with some definitions. And so SEO is really just the process of maximizing the number of visitors to a website. So as we talk, driving more people, right? Maximizing the number of visitors that we get to a website. And we do that by ensuring that your site shows up really high on the list of results that are returned by a search engine. So a search engine being Google, Yahoo, Bing, when somebody types in a keyword like remodeling company in Colorado Springs, if you're in Colorado Springs, you want your company to show up at the top of the list. And so that's what we're trying to do with SEO is, hey, how do I rank for lots of relevant keywords in my area so that I can show up really high and get more traffic? So starting with some basics and some definitions, but now hopefully we're on the same page for what we're trying to accomplish. This is a nice... 30 second check that you can do to see if your SEO is working. And this isn't the whole story. This isn't all the angles, but it's always the first place that I look. And so um, I've got at the bottom there a little bit of homework. You can either do this now during the presentation. It doesn't bother me. You could probably pull it up on another screen or just do it right after the presentation. Pull up your Google Analytics and look at your trailing 12 months. Better yet, maybe go out 15, 18 months because we do have seasonality in our businesses. Um, you know, November, December tend to be really slow times. So you will see traffic drop. Um, but what you want to see is, is my organic traffic. Organic meaning it's coming from search engines. So like Google, Yahoo, Bing. Is that traffic going up? Is it going down or is it pretty flat? And if it's going up, you know you're ranking either for more keywords or the keywords that you are ranking for, you're ranking higher up for them. So you're getting more traffic for those keywords. If you're flat, you're kind of maintaining in the marketplace. So you have competition, they're trying to rank for stuff too, and you're competing with them. So you're kind of holding even. And if you're going down in organic traffic, that means you're losing ground online. Um, and so again, it doesn't tell the whole story, but it's a great 30 second check to just say, hey, like I've been investing in SEO. Is it working? Um, this is a very easy way to just say, you know what, it is working or it's not working. And of course, then we get to leads and we need we need to go kind of behind the scenes and, and a little bit deeper. But um, if you have been working with an SEO company for a while and you see things are just going down, that gives you a really pretty strong indicator that there's some some at least some yellow flags, if not some red flags. And so this is that next component is total leads from SEO. So again, how do we know if it's from SEO? It's organic traffic. So you're looking at in Google Analytics, organic traffic, and you're looking at traffic from Google, Yahoo, Bing. It's mostly going to be Google, um, but you want to be able to track leads. This is something that many of you may not be able to track right now. And it, it may be because you don't have the tracking set up uh, in place, but I would highly recommend this as an action item. If you don't have the ability to measure leads by digital channel, so like leads from SEO or organic search versus leads from paid search versus leads from social media, if you can't break it down at that granular level, then you're a little bit flying blind as to the performance of things that you're doing online. So. Um, but if you can see this, you'll be basically be able to see lead conversion or number of leads from organic search. And you want to see that rising over time as well. And that, that way, you know, okay, my traffic is growing and my leads are growing from SEO. Like my SEO is probably improving and I'm, I'm doing okay there. So let's break SEO down and traffic down a little bit further. And we're going to look at two components. So we've kind of got the quantity of traffic and then we have the quality of traffic. And we've hinted and kind of touched on it a little bit, but raw quantity um, is great, but if it's not producing leads, which is a good indicator of quality, then we're missing some things. So I wanna walk you through um, an example. This was a remodeling company that uh, we had done some analysis for recently. 
And we notice they're ranking, you'll see a whole bunch of numbers. I'll walk you through it. You see they're ranking number one, you can see position one for a lot of different keyword phrases. As we dug in and looked, you know, quartz countertop island, uh, what type of paint is best for kitchen walls, what paint for kitchen walls, type of paint for the dining room, best paint finish. Keep in mind, they don't do just painting services. They do like large scale, you know, design build projects. So they do kitchen remodels, but usually it's like kitchen plus, you know, a first floor or kitchen and a bath. And so this is a good indicator where they were getting lots of traffic. You can see this term gets 300 searches a month. They're ranking number one. They're getting most of those clicks. This one, 200, this one, 450. So they're getting quite a bit of traffic. But it was all going to a blog post that that they had written about paint. And so they're getting traffic from all over the country. It's not localized and it's not really around the service that they offer. And so this is an area where quantity was going up, but it, we were lacking in quality. Versus take this example. They're ranking on the first page for a few things and they're starting to work their way up on a few others here. They're on page two, basically position one through 10 is on page one. Um, look at the quality of this type of keyword search, kitchen design, Lancaster, kitchen remodeling, Lancaster, kitchens, Lancaster, Lancaster, kitchen remodeling. And these all get a little bit lower search volume, but you think about the quality of somebody that's sitting in Lancaster or typing in kitchen remodeling, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, they're probably thinking about remodeling their kitchen. And so again, the quality of this traffic is gonna be much higher. So this company may have less traffic, but their leads are gonna be higher. So we don't wanna forget about the quality piece um, when we're working on SEO. So let's talk about some tactical ways that we can work on both of these things. We're gonna talk about service pages, project spotlights, as well as blogging. So this is an action item that you can potentially um, take with you depending on how your website is set up, but your core service pages are actually some of the most powerful tools you have when trying to rank for what I would call more like big hitter keywords. So when you think about something like um, motorized pergolas Jacksonville, somebody typing that in, like they're probably looking for a motorized pergola versus somebody that's maybe, um, you know, looking in and around some of these searches like outdoor kitchens, like outdoor kitchen ideas is probably a still relevant term. And that might be a, a nice blog post and we could get some traffic, but out of everyone that searches for outdoor kitchen ideas, there probably aren't as many of them that are ready to buy today or are future buyers even. And so, but outdoor kitchen, um, services or outdoor kitchen company, those are going to be what we would call more higher buying intent keywords. And so your services pages, if you set them up properly, they all start to rank for each of these individual service um, terms. And so you would see something like motorized pergolas uh, Jacksonville. So this the keyword could be motorized pergola services or motorized pergola installation uh, in Jacksonville. And then you'd have um, screen enclosures, Jacksonville, uh, outdoor kitchen company or outdoor kitchen services, Jacksonville. And so you can see on this page, we want to have, you know, our header outlining the location. And then we also want to have the actual services. And so you can see best reviewed enclosures and pergolas. You, you can see up here in the, the top of that page. Um, and so we're when we're thinking about optimizing a services page, we're thinking about our page title, our header, our URL, and then the content on that page. Most people are falling down in that they don't actually have an individual service page for every single service they do, like kitchens, baths, additions, basements, um, or in this case, they do a lot of outdoor stuff. Um, you might just have a portfolio or maybe just one services page and it just kind of talks about all of your services. Um, it is a huge SEO advantage to break down each individual service and target it with that keyword. Um, and so you'll see too in this, um, it's hard to see all the areas, but you'll see this where we work. This is a, um, an area module where you're listing out all of the like cities and neighborhoods and, you know, neighboring towns that you do work in. Um, this is the best practice that we found today is having one service page and then featuring all the locations that you serve in a little module like this. Um, if you've worked with SEO companies over the years, you may have bumped into the strategy of 
having an outdoor kitchens Jacksonville page and then an outdoor kitchens city B outdoor kitchens city C and you're targeting like literally all of these lists of like 12 or 15 cities and so you have 15 pages that look basically identical um, Google doesn't really like that and so go to your site make sure you have service pages for each individual service and then include like where you work and I'll list out all the cities on that page, um, but make your targeting around the main city that you work in. Um, so that's a huge opportunity from an on-page SEO perspective. Project spotlights are the next big opportunity. And this is one that I really love because uh, it allows you to target down by the neighborhood level. And I think we had a comment. Um, yeah, somebody said they really wanna learn how to pinpoint their ideal client base. I think that was Gina at the beginning. And this is a great way to do that. So here's, here's a good example. I'm in Colorado Springs. So we're about an hour south of Denver. And if I had a remodeling company, if somebody was just sitting, you know, maybe they're sitting in the good part of town and they're typing in kitchen remodeler in Colorado Springs, then you've got somebody that's maybe in uh, maybe the not so nice part of town. Well, if they're looking for a model, they're probably going to type in the same thing. And so if you're targeting, you know, like maybe a super high end area, like we have a neighborhood um, a little bit south of here called the Broadmoor. They have a famous hotel. There used to be a ski resort there, but that's where a lot of the higher end homes are. And so if you wanted to target that area, you could do a project spotlight page. So you could say, you know, like modern uh, kitchen remodel in the Broadmoor. And then you would spotlight, you know, hey, here was the problem. Here's what they came to us with. Here's the design we came up with. Here's what the finished project looks like. You kind of tell that story and you can see over here kind of showcasing the imagery as you go through that project spotlight. But now that page is optimized for kitchen remodel in the Broadmoor. And so if somebody, if their IP address is sitting in the Broadmoor and they're at home typing that in, this page is more likely to show up because it's hyper specific to what that person is probably searching for. And if they just are typing in kitchen remodel Broadmoor, then almost nobody is targeting at that like neighborhood level from an SEO perspective. So there's just like blue ocean um, in this arena. So if you're sitting there going, man, there's like three or four neighborhoods that I love to work in, building out multiple project spotlights. Um, if you do kitchen remodels, bathroom remodels, basements, um, you can do multiple spotlight pages for different services in the same neighborhood. And you can start to dominate those little niche areas of your, your city and your service area. And then the final kind of content marketing on-page SEO opportunity is blogging. And blogging is very open-ended in terms of what you can target and what you can go after. Um, generally, it's a good place to target what we would call top of funnel content. So somebody thinking about building a custom home in a certain area or remodeling in a certain area, but they're maybe they're new to the area or they're not ready, they're saving up. Um, you can cover things like the best places to live or um, the best golf courses, the best country clubs. If you're thinking like, okay, I have a high-end buyer. Um, I really just want to get in front of some of these high-end buyers and build a list um, of those types of people. Then I can target some of these blog um, content pages that are maybe unrelated um, seemingly, but you're attracting the ideal person. And then as they hit your site, they browse your portfolio, they download something. Now they're on your email list. They might be a buyer nine months from now, two years from now. Um, but you can start to really build that pipeline of ideal clients. You can also target what we would call bottom of the funnel things like how much does it cost to remodel a kitchen in the Broadmoor area or in Colorado Springs? And so you can target the locale and then also the question, the phrase, the keyword that you want to go after. And so most of the time people are falling down in the blogging arena by not targeting locally. So a good just like action item out of this is hop over to your blog, scan the titles and see if your target cities or locations are in any of the blog titles. And if they're not, you almost immediately have a, a big opportunity to go back through and optimize those posts for the locale, um, because otherwise you're targeting nationally and it can be really tough to compete at a national level for those keywords, but it's also not super relevant. So just going back to that, we want quantity of traffic, but also quality of traffic. 
All right, so that's the on page uh, factors that we, we went over. And we're gonna kind of make this shift over to Google My Business and local um, local SEO as it pertains to the map. And we'll kind of get into that. But as we make that transition, I wanted to show this page to show you that um, there are lots of ranking factors. I think if you just look at overall SEO, there's documented about 200 or more ranking factors. And so we're not gonna be able to cover all of those factors and probably just from like a time and budget constraint perspective, most businesses don't have the resources to pay attention to every single item on that list of 200 or more. We don't know them all. These are just pulled from studies of people that are doing, you know, pulling data and testing things and trying to figure out what does Google look at? They tell us some things, they don't tell us other things. Um, but you can see in terms of um, the local pack, which is the map, and then local organic, which is um, like below the map, if you just do a search or if the map doesn't show up in a search, then that would just be showing up um, naturally, like you've earned that ranking. You can see over here on the map side, 32% of that are Google business profile signals. On page signals would be a lot of what we talked about today with like um, your page titles and the location um, and generating content. And then we'll get into reviews. And then over here, you can see 36% were on-page signals. So the things that we're looking at today, we're talking about these on-page signals. We're talking about Google business profile signals. That's what we're gonna transition to now. And then even within that, we've got reviews. And so I always look at this and go, okay, if I can't focus on everything, let's focus on the things that have the most weight in me showing up in Google. So let's get into the top seven local search ranking factors. Um, and this is related to showing up in the map and locally. And so even just within this, there are at least 149 of these factors. And so, hey, if we're gonna focus on some, let's focus on the top seven and not all 149. So before we get into it, what is the local pack? You may have heard that, seen that, maybe this is new to you. It basically just means Google feels that a search had local intent. So isn't that nice? Google felt like it. And so when they feel like it, they show the map. But basically they're trying to determine like, did this search have local intent? So restaurants near me, probably gonna pop the map, right? Um, anything that's usually around services or somebody's typing in company, um, a lot of those types of phrases tend to have Google show the map because they're like, well, somebody's sitting here, they're looking for a service. They probably want that service close by. This is probably a local search. We're gonna show the map. So it's a good way to think about it, but this is the actual you know, definition is just, hey, the map shows when Google feels it has local intent um, and they have lots of different ways that they uh, figure that out. At the end of the day, to me, I just wanna make sure I'm doing the top things to make sure when Google does show the map, I want my listing to show up at the top, but if they don't show the map, then I wanna show up at the top of the organic listings anyway. So you can't really forget about both sides of the coin. And that's why we spent the first half of this talking about content marketing on your site. And this is all gonna be related to your Google business profile. So let's get into them. Um, out of these seven, you're gonna have a few things that you can action on right away. And then you're gonna have some things that are outside of your control, but I want you guys to walk away with a few things that you can do immediately. So step number one is make sure that you have selected a primary Google business profile category. So custom home builder in Ohio, but you can pick custom home builder, you can pick remodeling company. Those are the primary categories. If you do multiple services, go broad on the primary category, because as you'll see later, there's opportunity to add subcategories, um, but you want to pick the most relevant category to you. Most relevant, think quality. You know, you don't necessarily want to pick um, a category that you think gets more searches. You want to pick the category that is the most relevant to the services you provide. Okay, don't get fancy with it. This is, a, this is a, something that Google is looking for not to do. Do not stuff keywords into your Google business profile, your, your business title. So whatever your business name is, like this one, House to Home Solutions, put that as your business title for your Google business profile. 
even if your business name doesn't have any keywords in it, it doesn't sound like a remodeling company or a builder or whatever service you provide, like this company was clearly trying to, um, you know, stuff their, their keywords in there. Um, Google doesn't like that. They're going to penalize you. It only hurts you. So just make sure you're putting the actual name of your business uh, into the, the business title there. All right, number three. This um, this is going to be one that's um, a little bit painful just to to learn about if you're unfamiliar with it, but it will also maybe put you at ease. And so, what is it? It's proximity of address to the point of search. So if I am searching right here, and the map shows for whatever my search is, remodeling company in Colorado Springs naturally Google will pull listings that are closer to my physical location, my IP address, right? The, the point of search. And so the challenging, the painful part of, about learning this is that if you're maybe sitting in the corner of the city and your ideal target areas are across, like diagonal across on the other side, um, you're not gonna show up as often and or you're gonna show up lower on the list for people that are all the way across in your target market. So it is to your advantage to actually be closer to the areas that you serve. Because when somebody's sitting there at home and they type that search in, the map will show listings that are generally closer to them. Then it's going to factor in other things that we're going to look at. But this is number three on the list for how Google decides. They like proximity because in their mind, they're trying to get people to the best information the fastest. And if somebody needs a service, they figure, well, the closer, the better. So um, I'm not here to tell you to move your business or anything like that. That would be a monster decision. Um, maybe it's possible if you don't have um, a big office space or you're, you're renting and you could you know, move pretty easily. It would be something to consider. Um, but that's obviously a major business decision. So more of what this is, is, hey, if I'm not willing to move my business, which makes sense to me, not everyone would want to do that, then at least I know. So when you're doing some of those searches and you're trying to figure out like, why am I not getting as much traffic? Like this is a big factor. So um, a little bit unfortunate, but it is the reality. All right. The next one is also related to proximity, but this is, is the physical address of the business within the city of search. So here's Colorado Springs. You can see the red dots. If my, if my business location is in Black Forest, probably I'm not really showing up in the map at all for people that are in Colorado Springs and typing in searches that are local searches. Um, and so if you are outside the city and you're trying to serve that city, um, it you will struggle to show up in the map or at least show up really high. Um, and so that is another big business consideration. And again, if you're not willing to move your business, totally fine. It's good to know that this is what you're battling against. And so you're going to put a lot of energy into probably your organic ranking, non Google business profile related. And then you might just put more of your time and energy and money into like Google ads and saying, I've kind of have to overcome the fact that I'm not going to show up a lot in the map. And so I need other ways to get visibility online. So again, as I said before, this list of the top seven, some of these things you can control, some are outside of your control or you know, very difficult to change. And so some of it is just knowing it and being aware of it and saying, okay, well, how am I strategically gonna work around that? All right, number five is something you can do because there's definitely people that like to game the system. And so they will create fake profiles. They'll um, come up with ineligible business models, They'll do all kinds of funky stuff like this example. Um, this is obviously not a window covering showroom, but somebody tried to, again, because of the proximity thing, people try to game the system. They're like, I'll just create this fake listing that's in the perfect location, um, even though that's not actually where I'm located and just like check the box and say like, we don't serve customers on site. Um, so if you see listings like this and you should be just periodically checking, you can um, submit them and get them removed um, through spam fighting. And so Google has a, a way that they will, they do want to know about this stuff and they will remove it. And so if you do see fake um, businesses, fake locations, fake reviews, you should report it. And again, if those get reported, they'll get pulled out of the map and that will help you move up. All right, let's get to reviews. And again, 
a couple of these were really high on the list, proximity related, but even at number six and number seven, as we're getting to, there's 149 plus different factors. So we're still on a lot of factors that make a big, big deal. And so um, a high numerical Google rating is something that um, will influence you showing up on the map. Um, so this is, is it four stars? Is it three? Is it 4.9? That's the numerical rating. Um, there is a lot of psychology around having like a perfect five star. People are like, eh, are they really perfect? So I, I, I'm under the uh, belief that kind of in that like 4.6 to 4.9, is a good place to be, but it also is relative to who else is in your market. Like if everyone else is threes and you're sitting there at a 4.2, like you're, you're looking good. And so um, it is relative to, to competition. And so it's really important that you're always working to improve your, your star rating here by doing a good job and getting good reviews from people. All right. So this is number seven, and that is your additional Google business category. So again, if you were you know, remodeling, then you might below that, this is where you could do like kitchen remodeling, bathroom remodeling, pick your sub categories. And so you do want to fill these out because this is a big um, way that Google can figure out like what type of business is this? What kind of services do they provide? So definitely take the time. It won't take you long um, and you'll be able to, to fill in those categories. Again, relevancy is the key. All right, and I'm giving you one bonus one because it's related to reviews, but number eight on the list is also quantity of reviews. So you want a high star rating, but you also want a high volume um, of reviews. So this is something that you can definitely control as it pertains to ranking on the, the Google business profile um, is working on your reviews, um, fighting the spam, making sure your whole profile is filled out with categories. You've got the primary category and then your sub categories filled out. All right, so why do we wanna work on all this? You know, it seems like a lot of like in the weeds, tactical stuff, seems like a lot of work, um, but SEO is super powerful. Um, I'll walk you through just a couple of examples um, from clients. Um, this particular remodeler, they were able to grow their organic traffic. So that traffic from SEO, from Google, Yahoo, Bing, by over 1600%. Um, and within just three months, they were able to tie back 60 grand in revenue to local SEO improvements. Um, and a lot of that has to do with targeting different keywords and trying to move up in the rankings for, you know, things like kitchen remodeling, Colorado Springs, kitchen remodeling services, kitchen remodeling company. How much does the kitchen remodel cost? There's lots of, lots and lots of keywords that you can um, decide to go after and start to rank. And then you'll start to pull, pull that traffic in. Uh, this is another example. This uh, this remodeler was spending a lot on paid ads and they really wanted to drive that down and they wanted to build up their organic traffic through SEO. And so they were able to grow their leads through organic by 1600%. Um, some of that was SEO. Some of that was also working on their conversion on the site. Um, but you can see their overall traffic only went up 3.7% but organic went up 1600%. And that's because we were, at the time we were growing organic, we were reducing their paid spend on Google ads um, because their cost per acquisition was a lot higher through that channel. So they were spending about two grand a month um, on paid ads and they wanted to really just bring that down and if they could just eliminate it. And so over, I think it was over about 12 or 15 months, they were able to reduce that to, um, to pretty low if, if not uh, eliminate it altogether. All right, so let's pull out um, a couple of action items. We went through a lot of different things today, um, but the first thing is really setting your strategy first, which is who is my ideal client and what are my ideal projects? And really when thinking about the ideal client, they live in certain areas. So where are they? That should be the North Star as you develop blog content, project spotlights, you're working on your Google business profile, like we never want to forget about who are we trying to attract? Um, if we could wave that magic wand and just say like, this is my perfect customer, perfect project, perfect location. Like let's market to that because we know if we're doing that, we're also going to pick up some other stuff along the way. You can say yes, you can say no to it. But if we're going to spend marketing time and money and energy, we want to direct it at ideal clientele. And then from there, you're going to develop basically a content cadence and schedule. So, hey, I don't have any service pages. All right, 
once a month, I'm going to build those out until they're done. And then after that, I'm going to start blogging once a month. And anytime I get a project spotlight that is my ideal client or very close to my ideal project, we're going to build out a project spotlight page. Like pick that schedule and stick to it. And that will allow you to build your website into this asset that's working for you. I have blogs that I wrote eight years ago that still get traffic, that still generate leads today. Um, and so the more of this content that you stack up that starts ranking for you, um, the more it starts to pay dividends for you down the road. And then I would say too, implementing the top seven changes. A few of those you can't even do anything with because they're proximity related. And so going in, making sure you have that profile category filled out, the subcategories, and then building out, hey, how am I going to build into my system a way of getting reviews and working on my my star rating and uh, and the number of those reviews. And if you guys do want help with this, this is something that we do um, all the time. I'll just leave this up for a second. You can scan this with your phone. It'll take you to a booking link um, and you can connect with our team and just see if we're a good fit. Um, generally, as a rule of thumb, we serve design build companies, remodel interior remodeling companies, custom home builders um, that are looking to get more performance out of their online presence. They either want more leads or they want better leads and they're not getting the right type of leads. Um, so if you want, we can always chat about that. And then with that being said, I think we've got some time for Q&A. We can answer some questions. Um, if you do want a copy of my book, also, I will um see if maybe taylor can just drop my email in the chat but if you just um send me an email and put in the subject line um job tread then we will um and then make sure you put your physical address in the body uh, of the email but we'll send you a book awesome man that was uh that was a lot of great content there i i, I learned a lot as well um, you know, I did post the uh, the link, you know, another way, everyone, just to make it easy for you to reach out to Spencer, you can do that directly through the marketplace. Um, so, you know, drop that, just the comment and your address or whatever. Um, so, yeah, so let's, I think we had a couple questions here, Spencer. Um, someone was asking about the, uh, I, I guess, well, the first one, Travis is commenting that Google breaks proximity in our area. Um, hmm. We kind of talked a little bit about that, but um, Lauren had, uh, you know, so so what about service based areas and hidden addresses? I think that was kind of what you're talking about with uh, maybe using fake uh, addresses. Is that is that what you're thinking? Yeah, that's um, that's what it sounds like to me. And yeah, I mean, if you if you don't have an actual like address, if you're working out of the home and like it actually does get kind of tricky to tr try to build a local profile and have that because part of if you think about it from like the, the robot perspective, Google's like, what's a legitimate business? One of their just things that they think about is like, do they have a business address? And so it's just something that you have to navigate and you have to think about like, do I want, um, do I want to lease like a single office office space just so I can have like a legitimate business address that Google cares about? And it seems silly to make these decisions around like, what does Google care? But if it is a big, opportunity for lead flow, then it's worth a consideration is what I would say. And, you know, PO boxes have been a struggle, like trying to get those verified. And so, um, <laughs> in some ways we're at the mercy of Google. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, Lauren here asked, uh, do you also work with custom deck builders? Yeah, we actually have a few, um, right now. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Rajiv said, I am a specialist only doing bathroom remodels. Should I have Google My Business categories selected or only bathroom remodeler? I would say if you only do bathrooms and that's all you want, I would just do bathrooms and I would make that your primary. I mean, because really, what good does it do you to list kitchens if you don't want to do kitchens? I would say if you're open to kitchens, then just select your primary as the primary. And then if you do other stuff, you can put that as your subcategories. But if all you want is bathrooms, just do bathrooms. Sure. Quality is important. Like, I think we get distracted in thinking like, oh, I can get more traffic. It's like, you want the right type of people. Yeah. And what are your thoughts about location deception? <laughs> I don't know the entirety of that question. Um, it may be too deep in the weeds for me, but I would say anytime you try to game Google, they eventually figure it out and you get dinged. And so it was that with keyword stuffing. It was that with, all the like shady backlinks from, you know, websites that were just spun up 
to like, oh, I built a website and now I'm linking back to my site. And so I'm going to build a hundred of those. Like Google figures it out and then you just get punished. And so I always think about like, don't try to game the system. Try to build all of this around what's the best for the end user yeah. What's the best for the customer? And if that's your North Star, you almost will never do something that Google won't like because that's what they're optimizing for. They want to deliver the best information the fastest. That's why we use Google. You go to Google because you think you're going to get what you're looking for right away and really quick. And we'll all stop using Google if that stops happening. And so just keep that as your North Star. And and I'm of the, yeah, the camp of don't try to game the system. Yeah. So speaking of Google, uh, Jackie said, you know, she's all about learning all of this, but what about the other options for people to search other than Google? Yeah, I mean, you can you can go down that rabbit hole of like, how does Bing do it a little differently? And these other guys, generally, they all follow similar things that they're looking at. And Google's the big player. Like, go look at your, your traffic um, in Google Analytics and organic traffic and look at where you know different search engines you'll see google is by a mile and so if you're going to spend your time and energy just do it there i mean if you have the extra time and energy like sure but i would say if you're playing to maximize google you're probably doing good enough in the other ones sure so what are your thoughts on using blog writing services or ai yeah, blog writing service, um, nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's just like, hey, I'm working with a freelancer or a writing company. Um, the things you want to just be aware of are, is this person an SEO writer or are they just a writer? And do they know your world? Do they know remodeling? Do they know construction? And again, if we think about that North Star, we want somebody to one, find the blog. So it has to be optimized for SEO. It has to have a strong keyword strategy. Like, why are we even writing this blog? We're not doing it for fun. We're doing this for business. But then once they land on it, they have to read it and it has to be helpful and valuable and they, and it should portray you as an expert and it should build trust. So those are the elements I'm looking for. And I would say that with a writing service or AI, we're still in the camp of like human plus AI plus human at the end, if you're kind of like thinking about that um, to speed it up, but like direct it through strategy, you know, all of those types of things. Like what are we trying to accomplish? Use it to generate ideas, outline the post, maybe even the first draft, but then you're going to take a cut through it and you're probably be like, well, this doesn't really portray me as an expert or this sounds a little funky. It doesn't have our tone. Like we want to take another cut through it, but um, AI is just technology, just like, you know, a phone, it's going to make our lives faster and easier in a lot of ways, but, um, it's still too early for me to know, like, um, is this another Google is really smart and they quickly catch on to that company. That's just like cranking out a blog post a day through AI. So again, cautious. So I would say human yeah. plus AI plus human, and don't try to game the system. Yeah. How many reviews uh, would you recommend that you know people try to get per month? Good question. I mean, some of it depends on how many projects you're doing on any given month, but I would say you should try to get a review from every customer. I mean, you can obviously, if it went really poorly and you barely made it to the end of the job and it's like, hey, we, we made it, but it was challenging. <laughs> like maybe you don't ask that person um, because you're just playing the strategy. But I mean, if everything goes well, um, I would say try to get a review from everyone because not everyone will. And so I just recommend baking it into your process of um, asking for that review. Yeah. So Elizabeth asked, uh, so we service four states and only show up in the town that our address is in. You know, would listing areas on the website be effective? We only service four states, only show up in the town that our address. Yes. So in that instance, um, you may be able to, um, if you don't have multiple addresses in those locations, you may be limited from the like Google business profile, but you can definitely rank for them organically on the website. Um, and so you do, that's where you can leverage like areas we serve and you can create blog content around the different locations. Um, it definitely gets um, more complex, the more areas you're trying to target, but that's the way to do it is, um, is using the power of your website there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so another one was, how can I expand my area to other cities without buying ads? Um, you know, they, yeah. they do concrete work. So probably same, same thing there. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, through content, you know, you can you can advertise in zip codes or you can create content. And so it'd be like project spotlights or service area modules on your service page. Like, hey, we do concrete work and in all of these cities and these areas. Um, and then you'll start blogging about those and then link back to your core service page. And that'll strengthen that page that's targeting all those areas. Yeah. Is there a way uh, with images that you can have those like tagged to, you know, an area or location where that might also come into play? Yeah, typically if you hit, a good example would be a project spotlight page where you're like, okay, we're targeting that location, but then all the images, a best practice is to have those SEO optimized too, which would just be like renaming the file. So it's got maybe a descriptor of what's in the image and the location, as you just said, Eric. Yeah. Uh, so Rajiv said, I'm starting a new company and change the name of my Google My Business profile. Is this going to be a problem? Anything special to do in these cases? Mm, um, is the new, are you shutting down the old one? I'm wondering if, if you're keeping them both, I would have just created a new profile for the new company. If you're like rebranding, then yeah, I think you can just change the name. old one is shutting down. Uh, this is a little bit of that gray area where mm. I go, well, like, why is the old one shutting down? And like, now you're trying to get like, basically leverage the existing reviews and any like equity that old profile has built up by changing the name of it. Um, I'd want to do a little more research before I gave you like a straight up answer on that. Um, so I, I would do, do a couple of Google searches and tread cautiously. Um, general contractor, specialty bath company. Yeah, I still have like just slight, slight pause in thinking about like if people reviewed the old company and now this is a new company. Um, I don't, yeah, I let me get, we can get back to you. We can talk about it further, do a little more research. Uh, it's, it's gray for me. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if there are any other, any other questions out there or, you know, hey, I'd just love to hear kind of what's, what's your number uh, one and two takeaways from, you know, from this presentation? I, I know definitely a lot of, you know, a lot of, lot of, a lot of nuggets in here, but I'm curious what everyone is going to, you know, what are those couple things that you're taking away, uh, going to dig into right after this? And, uh, you know, Spencer, so I'm, I'm curious what, uh, you know, from, from your perspective, I mean, can you tell us just a little bit more about, you know, kind of what is your most, uh, you know, what, what's your ideal client look like? Is there a, you know, a size that they are, a, you know, number of employees, you know, you, you told us a little bit about the type of work, but maybe kind of a little bit more about, you know, kind of where they're at in their, you know, in their journey. Yeah. Yeah. We kind of have two, two groups. I would say like the sub 2 million um, is great for us being able to like strategically guide you, but help you actually learn the marketing and do it yourself. And then usually that like, two, two and a half to about 15 or 20 million um, where we're like clipping in as an extension of, of the marketing team, um, really trying to build out a very robust, holistic digital system. Yeah, makes sense. So Ron said he was disappointed in his uh, SEO company and going to reach out to you. Awesome. Yeah, hopefully some of this stuff helped too, Ron, but yeah, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for you. There's, there's, there's definitely a lot of uh, <laughs> very questionable uh, you know, SEO and, and, and marketing companies out there. And, you know, that's, you know, that's why we find it's, it's very important that, you know, you, you definitely work with, uh, you know, people that, 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 you know, that you trust, you know, at job tread, we're, we're very big on making sure that our partners are, you know, very, you know, very well vetted that we can trust them. You know, as, as I said earlier, Spencer will be out, you know, at, at job tread connect, you can shake his hand, get to know him, uh, you know, may, maybe give him a hug if, uh, if you really want, or if, he, if he's already uh, helped you out enough, but, you know, it's, it is important that you know who you're doing business with. Cause you know, it's, it's definitely, it, it, it really sucks to hear about, you know, kind of the, the scams out there. And I do think that, you know, it can be, you know, marketing, SEO, you know, running ads can, can definitely be one of those. So. Yeah. You hear a lot of the $300,000 a month SEO companies and it's like, they're not even doing anything there, you know? So, yeah. 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 So Travis said more, more project spotlights and blog posts targeting local areas. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, at least we had, thank you for good information. Need more like this. Awesome. Well, Hey, look, we really appreciate you uh, taking the time here, Spencer, to share this, uh, you know, very insightful presentation with, with the entire job tread community. You know, obviously we've got this recorded, we'll be publishing it. 
Um, but you know, also just want to thank you for everything that you've done for all the job tread customers to to help them with the marketing SEO, you know, getting their getting their companies on the map. And 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 really that's so important. That top of the funnel is uh, you know, is a, is, is a huge thing. But once you get that set up, boy, it, it it really can take you to a whole nother level and help you grow your business. So we really appreciate everything you're doing there. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. And yeah, happy to do it. And yeah, excited to see you guys in January for the conference as well. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everyone.